Hello there, Jose Rodriguez here again. I'm back with my GlowMachineShop.com mini mill. I want to clarify something that I said in my last video. The 3960 high torque mini mill now is the 3990. I've had this for about a year and a half, so I guess within that time they went ahead and upgraded it. And they actually replaced the spring torsion bar with the improved air piston system. And the function of that is to just make sure that that head is balanced. In other words, it is basically weightless. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. I'm gonna just take you through a three basic cuts with the mill just to show you how it works. I have a half inch four fluted end mill, a piece of aluminum here, and this is the extruded portion. Let me make sure. No, that is the sawn portion, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just take a few milling cuts across it. I have set the depth of cut to 15 thousandths. I reduced the RPM and that seems to have solved the uh, noise problem. It is a rather deep cut right now. Normally I tend to use a two fluted end mill for facing off my work. The reason it sounds so echoey is because of this bench that my mill is sitting on. It's a wooden bench and it does resonate. Yeah, that's quite a deep cut. Deeper than I really meant for it to do. Alright, let's go ahead and go up a few thousands on the Z axis. Raise it up a little bit because that is a bit deeper than I really wanted to cut at the moment. Usually what I try to do is I like to try to lock the z-axis when I am performing cuts using the x-axis and that keeps it because you know you never know the jibs might be a little bit loose I mean there's a certain amount of give to the or backlash to the lead screws and you want to make sure that every possible axis except for the one that you're using in uh, the actual cutting to be securely locked. like cutting on top of a bass drum. <laughs> Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and change this um, tool holder and put the fly cutter in place. I'm going to go ahead and loosen the drawbar. Give it a little tap. That'll loosen the collet. I'm going to go ahead and raise the headstock up. I had to unlock the fine feet at that point and uh, you can see the R8 holders. Now we're going to go ahead and insert the fly cutter. You got to look for that keyway and here we have it. And go ahead and cinch it down. Turn with the locking nut of the drawbar and I'm going to bring it down until it's just touching touching the work then I'm going to proceed oh you know what this thing tilts quite a bit to the way back that's why that cut was so it's not touching here but it is indeed touching back here all right we'll go ahead and make a couple of passes and see how well we do go ahead and engage the fine feed and bring it out and we'll gradually lower it until we get contact once we have light contact I will zero my dial and dial in about five to ten thousand so here we're just touching that burr 
that was raised by that four fluted end mill. Again, I highly recommend that you don't use four fluted end mills, but instead use a two fluted end mill for facing up your work. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and lock my headstock in place. That way it will not move up or down. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my Y feed is locked as well, and we will proceed to make a cut. And I can tell already as it gets to this end of the piece, it is actually cutting a little deeper. Since the tool is set to cut a uh, two inch diameter, I can probably get away with simply going to the end and then backing it up. And I'll go ahead and lower it a bit more and then we'll clean off the whole surface. I'm not taking any more material off. That means that that was a very nice accurate cut. There was no flex. Ooh, that's smooth as the baby's bottom and sharp. All right, we'll go ahead and lower it about five thou and proceed with one more cut. I'll increase the RPM a bit and feed at a slower feed rate. Keep in mind, uh, this mill should be attached solidly to a bench. I was thinking about getting a nice butcher block table and literally bolting it down and then hanging uh, some weights under the uh, table itself just to give it more mass. These mini mills are about a hundred and let's see shipping weight is about 140 and I think that's actual unboxed weight so you know, that doesn't even come close to the uh, several thousand pounds that a uh, full-size mill weighs. So yes, they are prone to vibration, but if you work within the limits of the mill, you should have no problems whatsoever with it. And this is beautiful. The whole surface now is machined, and it is glass smooth. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, raise the head again. And this time I'm going to install the drill chuck. And you always want to start with a center drill, of course. These um, little drills are very stiff. They do not shift or drift on you when you're trying to start a hole. And you know what? I really almost hate to have to destroy that beautiful surface. So I'm going to remount this on the vise so that I don't have to kill that beautiful surface. So we're going to go ahead and bring the headstock down. Now we are assuming that you have located your position for your hole. So that is done by indicating off the edge with an edge finder and then working your way to the point where the two lines intersect and let's imagine that that would be here okay so let's go ahead and begin and you basically want to just start the hole and that's all you need to do Then we'll just raise the head, remove the center drill, and replace it with your regular twist drill. Make sure it is sitting within the jaws perfectly square, and go ahead and tighten it up. Now with aluminum you might want to use a lubricating oil
Now I'm simply using the manual feed with the handle and retracting every so many millimeters to clear the chip. And you may have noticed that when I entered the hole, I'm not going to go very far, but when I entered the hole, there was no deflection whatsoever of the drill bit. And that may have happened had I decided not to begin with a center drill hole. And that's the beauty of center drills. You need to use them. Here's what they look like. They come in many sizes. I buy them in a set of five, and that's really all you need. You can use them on the lathe as well as on the mill. And once you center drill, you just raise the head, remove that center drill, insert the drill you're going to be drilling your main hole with, or if you're enlarging uh, a hole, starting with smaller drill bits, everything will be kept in alignment. And so you don't need to worry about anything, any kind of alignment issues. Okay, so I hope you saw how well the uh, little mill behaves. Sometimes, you know, like I said, it's best to mount it securely to a really solid base. This thing resonates like a, like a drum so you don't want to mount it such as I have done and this is basically just to have camera angles and to have accessibility to whatever I'm doing I can I can move my little wheel cart wherever I need, need it to be moved and that's it's just mainly for convenience when I set it up in the shop it will be on a like a four inch thick butcher block table with uh, massive legs and like I said I'm gonna weight it down so that's it for now. I hope you like the mill. If you are interested, contact littlemachineshop.com. They have the new model available as I speak. So if you like it, please hit like. If you want to subscribe, please do so. I really need your help. And of course, until the next time, happy machining and bye-bye.